People have a concept of skateboarding as being, you know, the Tony Hawk. This is like a little bit different. We really consider this being like a new type of vehicle. This is like longboarding, which longboarding is more about like commuting and cruising. And we're taking that even like another level where we're making it even easier for people by like adding the power and brakes. Yeah, let's grab the board here. We have the, the battery pack up here. This is the power button. This is the dock for charging the board. You have a, a charger that you can plug in here and then it plugs into a normal wall outlet. The charger that we deliver takes about an hour and a half if it's fully dead to fully charge. But we also have some like quick chargers that can do that even faster. The power wires run underneath the grip tape here. There's also two can wires for communicating from the battery to the motor controller. Have the uh, speed controller back here. These are the 2000 watt brushless DC motors, belt drive for the wheels there. A lot of this technology is the same technology going on to drones and stuff, and that's really what's making it, well, they have a lot of power for their weight, and also been able to drop the price down because a lot of the RC and drone technology is just being used here too. And so this is all controlled using a Bluetooth handheld controller and to pair it up, you click it five times, and it looks like it's paired up, and the wheels will move forward, and then if I move it backwards, they'll go in the opposite direction. And this guy's ready to go. Yeah, to use this board. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know what happened to his, his remote. Each remote, it can pair up with any board, and once it's paired up, it knows exactly which board is paired to, so you could have a lot of different boards, but it's only going to communicate with that one board. And then you can also go in reverse. <laughs> well, so you're just using your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the speed is like controlled with the, the remote. The steering is kind of similar to a snowboard or to any other, to any other skateboard, you just lean on your toes or on your heels to turn. A lot of skaters, they talk about how amazing it is having brakes because like when you're in, I'd say like San Francisco, if you're on a normal skateboard, you would have to normally, you know, stop by putting your foot down and do sort of a Flintstones like foot brake. Um, but yeah, you can control it all with your hands for this. You also don't have to worry about pushing and everything. You just pretty much just put your feet on it. You're not moving them and just roll the wheel to go. Okay. All right. <laughs> We want to change the perception of what people think about vehicles. Right now, a lot of people think about cars, and you're spending like thousands of dollars a year for the gas, the maintenance, you have to worry about parking. We really consider this being like a new type of vehicle where it shifts all of that. Such a relaxing feeling being on the board too, even like after a day of work, just being able to rip some cars, it's such a stress reliever. Get those endorphins going. It still is a skateboard, it, it has some risk, but we, we've made it easier, you know, by adding the power and brakes. It's basically dropping the learning curve. So, I mean, half of our customers have never been on a skateboard. I was never a skateboarder before this. In fact, I had ridden a skateboard all of once when I was about 10 years old, fell off and said I would never skate again. The board allowed the learning curve for skating to be so much easier because when you have brakes, that allows you to focus on balance and turning before you have to learn on kicking and stopping. And that really made it so I very quickly became super comfortable on it and now I'm able to to be able to ride every single day in traffic uh, on city streets and feel really safe. I've only fallen about three times in about the two years that I've been riding it to the point where I actually got a little bit of a uh, scuff on my arm. 
you have a safety trigger. So whenever you're riding, you hold down that trigger. So if for some reason, like you drop the remote or something happens, then it's going to basically become a normal skateboard. It's not going to be powered anymore. It'll just go to a coast. We know that most of our trips are under five miles, and so a vehicle like this is going to be fine for those trips. The biggest advantage of this one is that it's portable. In the city, a lot of times I want to get around on you know Caltrain or the bus or just jump into an Uber. And like I can carry this board with me like to any of those places. There's been electric skateboards and electric scooters out there on the market already, but a lot of them are using older technology, so it makes it really heavy and a lot of times like underpowered and stuff. That's really what we're kind of focusing on, is, is making things that are super portable and powerful. John built the first prototype of the board because he was actually getting around Stanford campus on a longboard. He wanted something that would get him around the campus faster because Stanford's a pretty big campus. It hits the, uh, the gate. He was at the same time working with these really powerful motors for robotics <laughs> and kind of like came up with the idea of just hey, I'm going to combine these motors with my longboard and made the first Houston board prototype. This is our uh, shop space here. It's where we do all the prototyping. So one thing that we're really proud of is that we're just a full stack company from concept to a prototype. This is just a bunch of prototyping stuff. We have, you know, different like foam things that we start off with. We'll take, you know, foam pieces and make prototypes. This is like of an early motor controller cover. From these early foam pieces, we'll create CAD models or like computer models of the parts. And then from there, we can go ahead and like start manufacturing, which have a lot of the uh, tools in the back here that we could do a lot of that in-house. Like over here, we have a very large laser cutter. We have like some foam pieces here that are getting cut out. On the screen here is where you can like create like the 2D patterns of what you're cutting out. And you can use a lot of different programs like this is Corel Draw or Illustrator. Easy tools that like a lot of people already know how to use. Basically to cut it, you can send it to the laser cutter and it's almost like sending a print job almost. When we first started off, we were over in Tech Shop, which is a membership machine shop. So we were able to, with a very small budget, be able to like make a few boards out of there. This is our uh, vertical mill. But yeah, we're slowly able to buy our own and move on out of Tech Shop into our own space here. Mm. Over here is our CNC mill. It's, you know, really powerful and fast. You have the, the bit that's spinning here and this table, and this is all controlled from the computers. We have a computer model of the part, and we can create a program, and it will basically cut out a lot of really amazing 3D parts. And this is our heat sink for the motor controller board. You can see like a lot of complex curves and stuff that it's able to do. I mean, we're able to basically come up with all the concepts for the products here in-house. It makes for like a very like short cycle to go from just a concept to a prototype. Yeah, we're trying out like just all sorts of different prototypes. Like this one right here has some like larger wheels on it. They're in pneumatic wheels, so they're filled with air. So if you have like bigger wheels, you're able to get over larger cracks and which also helps with like some of the shock and stuff. But these ones had a lot of like rolling drag, so I think that they wouldn't be a very good choice. <laughs> So these are just a bunch of wheels that we've tried out. We're using off-the-shelf like components just because there's a lot of great decks and wheels and stuff that are out there, so we want to like take advantage of that. But we're really like integrating everything. I mean, we uh, we modify the wheels, uh, the rear wheels at least. So we ha we have you know these pins that go all the way through that hold this gear on, uh, and this gear is what the belt pulls on. And there's a lot of torque that goes on, so making sure that that's centered and on there well is important. This is basically like our engineering space. This right here is a dyno, which is used to test motors. It's all about getting more efficiency out of the motors. We have some motors that are very lightweight, but just producing an immense amount of torque and power. 
This is the electronics that are controlling the motors. Uh, there's like 2,000 watt motors here. They're uh, DC brushless motors. It's about two and a half horsepower, which is enough to get me up San Francisco Hills at like a, a pretty quick speed. Then you have like the battery pack up here. These are lithium iron phosphate cells, which are the same type of chemistry going into a lot of the hybrid cars and electric cars like Tesla and stuff like that. Is that part of why you're here, like in this area? Yeah, a lot of the technical expertise is here for the engineering that goes into it. A lot of our engineers, you know, worked at like, you know, VW on their electric cars and I don't know, other robotics type stuff. So it's a great place for, for all this technology. Here is our assembly line. You'll kind of see some of the different parts of the board as they're like coming together. You know, that's part of the uh, sensor for the motor controller to know how fast it's going. It's the encoder being built up. Over here at this station, the rest of the motor is getting built up. People are pretty shocked that, you know, we're basically doing all the manufacturing and assembly like here in California. This is where we do some of the final like quality checks just to make sure everything is there. We have a very tight control on the quality and we can just have a very quick like iteration time so we get the product out into market really fast. Could you have done what you're doing 10 years ago? You could do it, but it'll be a lot tougher. There's a lot of things that have really helped out, and a lot of that is from the maker movement and people just doing a lot of DIY projects and stuff. We don't want to like stay in the skateboarding realm. We're developing the batteries, the electric motors, and all that stuff. Once you have that, that powertrain, you really can put it on a lot of different vehicles and products, and so that's really where we are excited about. We know that still there's not going to be people who are comfortable, you know, even on a boosted board. So, you know, eventually we're going to be making like other products that are even, you know, more accessible. The powertrain, it could go onto a lot of other vehicles and we look at making other vehicles in the future. That's really what, you know, boosted is, is a vehicle company.